Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you about some 2020 designer releases. So I haven't really talked to you guys about them. So I figure, hey, why not? <laughs> some weren't much to write home about and some were. Let's just jump right on into this. The first fragrance I'm going to talk about is Libre Intense. This came out shortly following the original Libre, which I actually really, really, really liked, but I only have a travel size in it, so I figured if I'm gonna get a full bottle, why not get the Intense? The Intense is pretty much your Libre, just with added vanilla. Original Libre, um, you had a citrus top with lavender. Um, a citrus top with lavender. There's black currant in the middle. You had your flowers, jasmine, orange blossom, and more lavender. The vanilla, cedar, and ambergris musk were in the base. Um, and so in Libra Intense, you definitely get all of those things um, just with the base, adding the vanilla, vetiver, tonka, vanilla extract so they deepened it up for us and i kind of like it um i'm not quite sure which i like more the original and or the intense the original had its own special quality about it that was bright but with that lavender um and then this libra intense intensifies it it deepens it a little bit and makes it a little bit co more cozy um so I have it. It's cool. I don't know if I feel the magic like I did when I initially got the leap. But um, I just need to wear it more, probably experience it more. So far from the little bit that I've actually worn it, I feel like I get average longevity on this average longevity sillage and projection on it the next fragrance that i have is this beautiful beautiful lovely fragrance so this is your good girl supreme supreme by carolina herrera this one um, I have the original, I have the Legere, and there was no doubt I had to go figure out what this flanker was about. So when I tried it, <clears throat> um, I was a little taken aback because I felt like they stripped away the magic of the original. I feel like they left some pretty basic elements to this to make it more mass appealing and then put it in a gorgeous bottle. Um, overall, you still get the air and sillage of Good Girl, I think, um, but I definitely enjoy the original and Legere more, but my bottles of Legere and the original are actually pretty miniature. The Legere I ended up getting a bigger size but this is a bigger the biggest shoe that I own and this is um, a 1.7 so I must have a one ounce of the Legere and the two little minis but um, when thinking about this when I went ahead and smelled the OG again <sighs> It's just so beautiful. Why mess with that? I think they just heard too many people saying like, oh, there's just something about it I don't like. And to be honest, and I've talked about this before, I did not like the OG in the beginning. I just did not. I thought the shoe was tacky. I was not feeling that those notes. Um, and so it took me a while to get used to it. I think my nose was just really into the fruity floral or fruit chewy kind of fragrances. And so this was more of, Carolina Herrera was more of 
an elevated experience of that because we had those deeper notes. We had the coffee, we had the cacao, we had um, some tonka and things that were just a little bit more sultry and different to my nose. But I smelt the air of Good Girl and I was just in love. Like, that's what that smells like without, you know, just spraying it and closely up on a strip of paper or too close in your skin. It is beautiful. So let's get back to this. This one I had to kind of clear my mind and say, we're not going to approach this as a relative of good girl. We're going to approach this on her own. And so when I did that, I was able to appreciate it a little bit better. Um, this particular one has forest fruits, jasmine, tuberose, tonka, and vetiver. So they took out some of the old... Um, the notes from the OG, which is like almond and um, cocoa and coffee, some delicious notes that kind of make it pretty unique. Um, but this is just a little bit more mass pleasing. And what you get with those notes of just the forest fruits, jasmine, the flowers, and then the tonka and vetiver is that you get this kind of fluffy, sweet cloud of a, a I don't want to say berries because as soon as I think berries, I think kind of raspberry, um, but they say forest fruits. So a darker berry to me and this cloud of sweetness. Um, so I'm okay with it. I do adore this particular shoe. I, I like the shoe now. Um, I know there were some others in the past, like polka dots, red velvet, Navy velvet would be amazing or ombre velvet, but this is ombre glitter and it looks absolutely stunning. So I picked it up. The next fragrance that I got, um, you know, in those weak moments of retail therapy is Burberry for her London Dreams. So this, they put this as a flanker in the line of Burberry Her um, that follows Burberry Her, Burberry Her Blossom, Burberry Her Intense. Um, and so then this came along, London Dreams. I smelt it and I was taken aback because here we go again, something citrusy, something that doesn't feel like we're moving into the fall and it definitely smells nothing like the Burberry Herline at all. So, but I was still intrigued enough that I was like, let me have it because there's something about these fragrances with these citrusy kind of openings that are more invigorating. So, um, with this one, we have lemon and ginger. I don't get a spicy ginger, so it must be a little bit sweeter and mixed with that lemon. Then you get the florals and the heart of peony and rose. Um, and then at the base, you have musk and amber. So the, the base isn't too deep, but it's enough to keep the citruses grounded. This is marketed as like this young vibrant girl having tea in London um, and so that whole imagery is just something that I love <laughs> I'm obsessed with like tea culture and coffee culture and so this whole idea of London tea to me is just very intriguing and so I felt like in fragrance world this would be close to that um, I know there's other plenty other tea fragrances, but this marketing and this brand, I just felt like, yes, I will get it. So I really like it. It's easy. <clears throat> it is, um, again, bright, but this is one that when I think of whoever this girl is that they're marketing to, she's usually in business attire. But on the weekends, she has to, um, her choice is to be more casual um, when running errands. So that's a white 
collared shirt, unbuttoned, the trench coat, maybe a cigarette pant, and um, some very either clean trainers or leather loafers or um, even a Chelsea boot. So, and I say that because this smells like someone who's generally more formal, but this is their informal casual wear. And it almost, almost has this unisex vibe to it that I'm really digging. So it's sweet and floral and bright enough, but there's kind of something about it that gives it a masculine kind of edge. It's not masculine at all, but it can be very unisex and it's reminiscent of fragrances or colognes that are typically um, lighter, fresher, and on a sporty side. This is Burberry for her, London Dreams. The next one I have is Coco Mademoiselle Lo Privé. So this is the fragrance that came out as a flanker to Coco Mademoiselle, and it is specifically a bedtime fragrance. So this is very light. It is very soft and supposedly perfect for bedtime. Um, I did get the intense and the intense while I had all these plans to like, oh, spray, walk through the fragrance or spray it with my lotion and do it that way. Cause I believe that you can water something down. You don't buy a watered down version. You just, if you have something at a max or intensity, you can always bring it down. But it proved to be just way too much. Like I tried to layer it with vanilla. I tried to just spray under my clothes and the patchouli in that thing was kicking so hard. Like I felt my nose was under assault. Like I, I just cannot escape it the way it projects, the way it was just on 100 at all times was just way too much. So they say this is supposed to be softer and sweeter. To me, it just smells softer. So I don't have them side by side, but that patchouli is scaled all the way back. Um, it's still there and it sm still smells like your Coco Mademoiselle but this is very light. So at first I was like, you put this on to go to bed, it's still a bit strong, but no, it really dies down and sits really close to the skin. Quickly, it does not project um, like that. So for me, should I have gotten the Coco Mademoiselle, the original, or maybe I think there's a low, I'm not sure. But I was just in that, um, it was a time frame that I had to return the other one and I just had to make a split decision. Um, and I didn't do enough research, I think. But I'm pretty happy with this one because the bottle is frosted and um, I actually genuinely love the smell. I think it's very classic and one that I like to have in my collection. Um, and so this is a very soft fragrance where like if you're sleeping, spooning, canoodling, <laughs> somebody's in the crux, crux of your neck, this or in the crook of your neck, wh whichever way you want to say it, <laughs> this fragrance is what they smell and it gets cozy and I pretty much like it. And I think it's appropriate for the office if you're in a smaller space, um, but you still want to smell nice and professional. The next one I have is one that you have seen on my channel already. If you've watched any of the other videos, this is a Valentino Voce Viva. I did a full review that I will link for you. Um, so do check out that review. But again, this is one of the newer 2020 releases. Um, of the fall or end of summer going into fall and this is one 
that I absolutely adore. It has a citrus um, bright opening with uh, bergamot and mandarin, and then flowers of orange blossom, golden gardenia, and then in the base you have the crystal moss, vanilla, and tonka. And so now that I have worn it, I know I love it. It's just really this inviting warm vanilla and I'm a vanilla lover so this is just perfect for me it's an easy grab it is elegant it's girly it's um, upbeat which is important to me because I do have fragrances that I know make me feel cozy I want to go to sleep and half the time I cannot do that but I do like to feel comforted but still upbeat and this is one it's just it's it's delicious. It's easy. It's mass appealing, but it's still a really great scent that I absolutely love. So do check out the review. The next fragrance that I have is Gucci Bloom Profumo di Fiori. And so this, friends, comes in this beautiful yellow bottle even the travel size i absolutely love when companies give attention to the travel sprays because i'm one who is a full advocate of them um i didn't want want to commit to a whole bottle but i did want the fragrance i picked this up because a, I love the bottle as we've already established that but i have been exploring tuberos um, tuberose was a flower that I could not get into, but now I'm learning to enjoy and appreciate. So Gucci Bloom is a line full of tuberose. Um, it's a warm floral, and that, that was another thing that really turned me off. Like when you smell something, it smells warm, deep, and heavy, and you're just like, but it's a flower. Like, <laughs> why is it warm like that? But tuberose, this is nice and creamy. Let me give you some notes for this. This is, um, they they call it a bloom accord. Okay, I don't know what that is. But ylang, ylang is in this. There's sandalwood. It's a white floral. Ylang, ylang and sandalwood are the main notes. So this, to me, kind of gives me that bubblegummy, um, I've heard it also described as gummy bears. Uh, so I kind of get that in this one, but don't write it off just yet. It does warm up and it does get a little deep, a little woodsy. Um, and some of that sweetness, bubble gummy, gummy bears just kind of fades away. So it's kind of like it moves into the night. So it, we we're out there's happy hour we're lively we're fun and then we're going to move to the nightlife where you're probably going to a lounge you're probably just going to have a drink um so it does warm up it does get a little bit more woodsy and musky and i've been quite enjoying it enjoying it so much so that um i saw a bottle like a huge bottle again we, we know that I love the bottle, right? That I saw at like an unbeatable price and I just had to grab it because, yeah. Um, I enjoyed that about this, that it um, kind of changed to this deeper, more sultry kind of scent. And when I tested this against um, another tuberos, I think it may have been like my way the smells, it's so funny, and I'm remembering, because I didn't do this yesterday, but recently, when I tried this up against the My Way, it was like night and day. This was like darker, it seemed a little smokier, and My Way was just bright, happy, sunny, um, doing that thing. So this is Gucci Bloom. The next fragrance is this beauty this was in my haul video too 
This is Angel Nova, and it is the newest release from Moogler. Um, this is such a gorgeous flanker of Angel. <laughs> so you see it's this pink color. It's a standing star. It's not going to stand in my hand. It's a standing star. Um, but let's talk about the notes. You have um, rose. There's raspberry, lychee, um, and then they give you a woody base with akigali, ak akigala wood and benzoin. Um, this, I'll spray some in there. This, <laughs> so it says lychee and it says raspberry. But then they also say it's a supernatural rose in here. And I think, um, to my understanding, what the supernatural rose is that's been specially and exclusively made for Moogler is that they're upcycling a rose. Like they, it goes through like two distilling processes. Um, and so they have named it a supernatural rose. But when I first got this, my first impressions of it was more of a raspberry um, shoe like candy chew, raspberry candy chew, if you ever had mambas or something of that sort, that's what I was kind of getting from this. Um, talking to some of my fragrance friends, I think um, lychee and rose felt Delina-esque. Um, to me, I think that high pitched, I think it's lychee and raspberry, it just feels very tart and a little rhubarb-ish um, that we know from Delina. So, if anything is just too deep and I need something bright and fruity, I put this on. Because it will, this, you guys, the longevity, projection, sillage is everything we know of Moogler. And this tart fruit in here, um, it does settle down a bit, but usually i have topped this off on other fragrances that need a little boost to it so i'm glad i have it in my collection i don't think it is moogler's best work or it's going to be ground breaking for the moogler fan this is definitely a more mass pleasing scent um and it's very much in line with the likes of ocrosiers so they had the 2019 and the 2020 ocrosiers um, and this is very much in line with that, with that fruitiness. Um, and then sort of, those have kind of a gourmand base. This is more of a woodsy base. So, but I'm enjoying it. Last fragrance that I have for you guys. And um, I talked about this in my other video. Uh, my 10 most unique fragrances in my collection and this is Tom Ford's Black Orchid um, Parfum. So this guy's the original Black Orchid back in the day when it came out. I say back in the day but before I was on this whole fragrance journey and it first came out I could not smell this. This would be instant headache it was just way too powerful, way too strong. The projection was out of control. The sillage was everywhere. Um, and so I just could not even begin to be interested in anything of this nature. So when I, now that I've been on this fragrance journey and this came out, I smelt it and all you, you definitely get this boozy, spicy plum and rum patchouli and lang lang you get all of that in this fragrance um and it smelled so good in the air that i had to get it. i was like don't be afraid be brave be bold get black orchid so i did and then i said okay i'm i'm trying to test it out let me spray it on myself i'm not giving myself a headache and so i go on i'm like Yes, it's good and I'm going about my business and then I'm like I still smell it but 
why do I have to get so close to my skin to smell it? So, um, I've heard that the original Black Orchid has been reformulated. This particular one, I think, is just not up to those Tom Ford standards that we have. It is an absolutely beautiful fragrance. It is decadent. It is rich. However, the projection and sillage is just not what it used to be. That may work for somebody like me, <laughs> who's not as bold and brave all the, all day. Um, so I will wear this and see what I think. Um, but I absolutely love the smell. It's, it's gorgeous in this bottle. Everything. Those are the new 2020 designer releases that I have um, that I just wanted to talk to you guys about since I don't know if I'm doing, you know, really in-depth reviews on any of these. But if there's more you'd like to know, definitely hit me up. If there's something else I should make a video about, let me know about that also. Um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next video. Bye.